On October 2nd, 1950, Charles Schultz debuted his new comic strip and the world soon became captivated by the story of Charlie Brown and the entire Peanuts gang. And here to celebrate 70 years of these beloved characters entering our homes is another big fan. He's sitting right over here, Ken Wingard. You know, I, I do, I do. Like, good grief, Charlie Brown. Why <laughs> you brought me so much joy? But it's, it's 70 years, so it's like I grew up you know, watching Charlie Brown. Um, and now my kids are growing up. And I think what's really magical about it is what Schultz created was this, this group of friends. I just got total like, like, yeah. like peanuts, no, it, like goosebumps that we can all relate to. Their characters are so different and each of us like can really bond with one of them and understand sort of our workings with our friends through the Peanuts gang. It's truly magical how they impacted families. I know speaking from you know experience, I think a lot of families will have their own stories, but we always used to wait. We used to mark the date that a Charlie Brown Christmas was coming on television. For whatever reason, my brother's nickname as a kid was Charlie Brown. All his friends called called him Charlie Brown and it just stuck and you know like it was, it was were you like pulling the football out I mean, like it, every... it actually wasn't I think it was more just his essence like he had this Charlie Brown essence and it was Aww. really really special for sure well it's funny you talk about the the Christmas special but it was for us it was like as a kid every single holiday it was you know waiting for the the, um, the pumpkin to rise yes. like the Thanksgiving special the Christmas special and to this day now like we mark the beginning of each of those holidays bringing my kids around and and turning that it on to sort of kick off whatever holiday it is with the, with the Peanuts gang. So it, to me, it's no surprise that something that has become so traditional and such a, a thread through families and generations, like Charles Schultz, has partnered with Hallmark, which does the same thing, brings family together through all the holidays and throughout the year. It's like the perfect sort of like. It really is. It really is. And I know as we're talking about our own personal sort of connection. With uh, with Charlie Brown and the Peanuts gang, I know everybody at home is probably doing the same thing, and they're kind of right, going exactly. through their mind too. Now, of course, Mr. Schultz uh, passed away 20 years ago, but tell us a little bit about how the Hallmark artists are keeping his legacy front and center and still very much alive. Right, so it's been 20 years, and one of the things I love love about Hallmark is this respect for tradition and respect for artists. Yeah. And when you get those things together, you really sort of create magic. So, you know, we talk about the Hallmark artists all the time and there's such an incredible pool of talent, but Hallmark also has some of the few artists that are able to actually draw original Peanuts cartoons, the characters. Wow! So they have been able to sort of keep his legacy alive and to bring us sort of new thoughts, new ideas, and new views on live all through the Charlie Brown. I love it. It's really, really beautiful. So exciting too. Okay, everybody, take a look at this. Since 1960, over one billion Hallmark Peanuts cards have been sold. But it wasn't just cards. The characters started making appearances in other aspects of Hallmark. Books, candles, gifts, ornaments, and more. Charles Schultz himself illustrated the early Peanuts Hallmark cards, and eventually he would pass that torch to the company's artists. His hands-on approach to teaching the secrets of his style would lead to one of the longest lasting Hallmark partnerships. I first met Charles Schultz in the 1980s when he came out to Hallmark and it was a thrill for me because he had been a childhood hero of mine. I used to read those Peanuts collection books as a kid and I never thought that I'd actually get to meet him. I did have the opportunity to go out to his studio and talk with him and learn his approach to doing the characters and I think that's been very helpful for me in doing my work here at Hallmark. Whenever I'm inking a Peanuts character, I try to make it look as much like Schultz did it as I possibly can so that all of me is gone and only Charles Schultz is showing. And while Rich prefers a traditional artistic medium, the thing about using ink and a pen nib is you have to keep dipping it all the time. A new generation is introducing the Peanuts to modern technology. Schultz just drew everything so fast. I work digitally so much, it's a little harder for me. We can edit so much on the computer, which is nice, but his spontaneity is what makes the Peanuts so great. 
No matter their approach, Schultz's one-of-a-kind artistic style is the magic behind the Peanuts gang. And so so I wonder if there is, is there any place to get greeting I have cards in a Kansas. City? Feeling you can find a few there for sure. <laughs> and I also have to say, it's sort of fascinating to see how the peanut style has transformed from ink into digital. Right, and it's hard because the ink is really where that magic is, but I think that 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 moving it to the digital like works beautifully. And now we're gonna take it from the digital. Yeah to the actual. Of course you are, because you're Ken Wingard, <laughs> and this is so great. We're gonna make a Charlie Brown Christmas tree, everybody. So now we had, my husband and I had lots of arguments when we were talking about this, about what to make, Charlie Brown's Christmas tree or Snoopy's decorated doghouse, <laughs> which was more <laughs> iconically Charlie Brown. I had a say. I won with a Christmas tree. I'm a little biased, but for sure I'll say the Maybe Christmas tree. Maybe next year we'll do the doghouse, house. Okay, right? that sounds like a plan. All I right. love that. Okay, so what do we do? So we, I, you know, I love this tree. It is so sweet, and it really is like the heart of that special. What we're gonna start off with is just inexpensive scotch pine from the craft store. Okay. Um, you wanna get the long needled scotch pine, not the short um, fir, because that's what Charlie used. Um, and if I have, I bought like three of these long ones. They were like two dollars a piece and then you can rip them apart to get sort of extra little branches like this so and then all you're gonna do is get a dowel um, and that's gonna act as your trunk and you're basically gonna tape your branches to the dowel so what I'd like to do first is sort of line it all up on okay. how you actually want um, want his tree to be you know. Do you tape it all at once or can I do uh, tape the first one first and then add the other ones later? Well, what I like to do is like lay it all okay. out so you know right. what your plan is. Beautiful. And then once you know your plan, you can do them one at a time. I now. got you. All I'm taking is painter's tape, but whatever you have, gaff tape, whatever you have, not scotch tape, it's not gonna be strong enough and not floral tape, it won't be strong enough. And then just go ahead and tape it on to your Dowel. When you get Beautiful. to the next branch you want to add, you're just going to layer that right in and then continue taping all the this way down. This is so sweet. I got to tell you, it's bringing back so many memories, isn't it, Ken? Like, just, just thinking about that episode and... Linus and all of it. Schroeder all of it playing, the, Schroeder the, the playing. Christmas dance where everyone's dancing. It's all so sweet. Once you get your whole tree kind of right. set up, what you're going to do is get, now you have a couple of options. I'm going to use brown floral tape because okay. I had that, and I'm going to wrap that around everything, and that's going to disguise the blue. But if you don't have floral tape or don't want to go out and get some, you could also just use regular old brown craft paint. Yeah. Um, the key is here just to cover up that blue, um, that blue painter's and, tape. And once you've got it all put together and covered up properly, how do you get it in that that very almost iconic stand too? Well, the what I have here visually will remember forever. is simply a little bit of like fur here that I sort of cut with a craft knife. I've got my finished tree that I've got all wrapped. I did wrapped all the separate branches. And all I did, I put a little uh, hot glue, some little tabs there to keep it balanced. Okay, that's And all I did is drill a hole and I'm just gonna put it through one hole and then straight here through the other and voila, you've got your tree. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in place here. Now, if you remember the story, oh. the tree was, um, was standing there and it was all droopy, wouldn't stand up, kind of like this one here. <laughs> well, that's good, it's, here true. We go. it's true to the show. And what happened was Charlie put the little ornament on it oh. and the poor thing drooped all the way to the ground. Now remember, it wasn't until Linus, the heart of the show, took his prized possession, his blanket, and oh. wrapped it around the base of the tree that the tree perked up, and then Linus said, I never thought it was such a bad little tree. It's not bad at all, really. Maybe it just needs a little love. It's actually emotional here. I mean, it's amazing. The memories are coming up. I've got goosebumps. Right. This and, uh, is so Schultz, sweet. Schultz like, yeah. gets at the heart of things, the heart of love, the heart of family, the heart of Christmas. I'm tearing up right now. What is going <laughs> on with me, everybody? It's amazing. It's magical, like we said. Like we said, everybody, to celebrate the last 70 years of Peanuts history, you can visit your local Hallmark Gold Crown store or Hallmark.com. Wow.